We are continuing the dialogue with the White House correspondent Bill Koenig, who has served in the White House press corps for almost 16 years now. Eric Barger, my co-host, remains in studio with me as we continue to talk about a lot of current issues. Last week, we spent a lot of time on Bill's newest book, Revealed, Obama's Legacy. The legacy is extremely dark, and some of the topics we covered last week would be the fact that he ran roughshod over the U.S. Constitution, undermined America's judicial system, became the world's number one promoter of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender causes, and I could go on and on, the directed a destructive transformation of the military, lectured God-fearing Christians, became a Muslim apologist, became passionate about Middle East refugees coming to America. We want to update on that. Endangered Israel and U.S. Middle East allies by destabilizing the entire region with that hideous Iranian treaty, which, quite frankly, other nations went along with. And this week, we're going to take a little different focus, though we may be referencing some of those issues. And I said in my tease of last weekend that we wanted to open by talking a little bit of inside information, no one better to do that with than someone who served in the White House press corps for almost 16 years. Bill Koenig, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Jan. Well, let's move into campaign 2016. First of all, you were present back in June. I, I had wanted to attend, was not able to at the last minute, but there were about a thousand evangelical leaders present with Donald Trump. You were present, and uh, give me your thoughts. I thought it was a good opportunity for Christian leaders to sit down and listen to Trump, to have an actual meeting where he would express his five or six things that he's committed to to help the Christian community. Number one is to preserve religious rights. The Civil Rights Commission right now is trying to put civil rights above religious rights, so this is going to be extremely important. The selection of anywhere from two to four future Supreme Court justices. Trump put a list of about 11 or 12 out that are very conservative and have been, that are considered excellent potential candidates for the Supreme Court. He also wanted to get rid of the Johnson Amendment, which has to do with basically putting free speech by pastors from the pulpit, their nonprofit churches, under risk, you know, if they say certain things. His plan was to get rid of the Johnson Amendment, which he said, I want every pastor in America to be able to say exactly what they feel from the pulpit and not be penalized or at the risk of being penalized. Also, he talked about, you know, the stronger borders, dealing with this 11 or 12 million plus immigration issue that we have, illegal immigration. Then also he talked about re-strengthening the military, which has really been depleted just enormously, which I go into great detail about in my book, Revealed, and, you know, bringing the military back together and just putting everything, I mean, five or six key areas that are very important to Christians. You're making a commitment to that, you know, with Mike Huckabee there, Ben Carson there, Jerry Falwell Jr., Pastor Jeffers, and others. But we're very supportive of uh, Trump as well. I said to you off-air, Bill Koenig, and Eric, um, I I want you you to weigh in on this, please, and that is, I feel that this is an election that is going to be between the globalists and uh, those who love uh, freedom. Nigel Farage said that in Mississippi a couple of weeks ago when he was here in the country. We've got a battle going on for those who want a one-world government, and I believe Hillary Clinton wants globalism. I'm not so sure that Donald Trump does. I think I see him more of a national nationalist than a globalist. Would you agree, you gentlemen, on that? Yes. Eric? Absolutely. Trump has made statements against globalism, and I think he understands the definition of the word, yet uh, Mrs. Clinton has a long history. She and her husband both, and if you go back into their White House, back into the 90s, you can see the trail of globalists that they had around them, and also those who mentored her and him. Bill, but you have you said to me privately that uh, Wall Street assumes Hillary Clinton will win campaign 2016. You know, that was some of the talk in the last couple of weeks that, uh, you know, with the record Wall Street numbers, that they're already kind of factoring in the fact that they think that uh, Clinton's going to get elected uh, in November. Uh, that's one big issue. The other thing is, when you look at the uh, some of the reaction of some of the former establishment Republicans that are not going to support Trump, well, who are you going to support? They're not coming out saying they're going to support Hillary, but they're just saying they're not going to support Trump. Then you have some of the, you know, the media, 85, 90 percent of the media is just doing everything mm-hmm. they can to to obliterate Trump personally. 
Uh, and at times he, he helps them a bit. But more than anything else, they consider Trump a major, major threat to their uh, news organizations. They have had their way for a long time. They have had their way to the extent that they determine who's going to be the next senator or congressman or president. They've had so much influence. And the fact that Trump has been able to take them on has won him a lot of votes because a lot of Americans are fed up with the media as well. And our congressional approval rating right now is somewhere in the right. mid to low teens. People are just fed up with Washington and fed up with business as usual and would like to see Washington implode and be rebuilt. And they're just so much riding for the establishment people that it's going to be a very challenging, difficult unfortunately, pretty dirty election all the way until November. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. I have on the line from Washington, Bill Koenig. And by the way, and we covered this last week, we're carrying his newest book, Revealed, Obama's Legacy. You can find that in my bookstore at olivetreeviews.org. Views as in viewpoint, olivetreeviews.org. Eric Barger's been in studio with me last week and this weekend quizzing Bill Koenig about uh, lots of issues. And Eric and in Bill, we have those listening right now who are never Trump people. And by the way, they are very passionate on our Facebook. There's no way they would vote for Donald Trump in 10 million trillion years. What do you say to the never Trump people? And this is in light of the fact that the consequences of a Hillary Clinton presidency are catastrophic. And yet we've got a big element out there listening, watching, and voting. Sentiment? Never Trump. Eric? Where do I start? Would you just rather our free speech went away? I'm not uh, a fan of and haven't been out campaigning for Donald Trump, but when I understand the alternative, and I recognize that free speech and our ability, especially our religious free speech, is at at stake, and the Supreme Court justices that Mm -hmm. my grandkids will have to live with their decisions if the Lord tarries, those two things don't allow me to think that uh, just because I don't like the package, we know, look folks, we know what we're going to get with Hillary. Let's just put it in blunt terms. We know what we're going to get. With Donald Trump, we're not sure, but we know what we'll get with Hillary. We hear what Trump has said he will do with the Supreme Court justices. That is the real prize of this election. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all can write us, and I understand that people are very passionate about this. It's very contentious. It's caustic. The fact is, our Supreme Court is at stake here, and that to me, because they're the most powerful people in the country, Mm. when you get down to it, in the vast array of public officials, they're the ones. And uh, whoever is there is going to make a lot of decisions that we as Christians are are not going to like, and it's going to hurt our our ability to even spread the gospel. So what more can be said? That's enough right there. Those two things, the Supreme Court and our free speech. Bill Koenig, your take on this? Totally agree with what Eric just said. Uh, You know, just take where we are right now. Now, take the fact that Civil Rights Commission a couple months ago is doing everything they can right now to move civil rights above religious rights. Free speech. You got 145 congressmen right now that are Democrats that are pushing a resolution that speaks out about those that speak against Islam. I mean, 145, almost every member, Democratic member of Congress, has signed on as a co-sponsor of a resolution that is going to chastise anybody that speaks against Islam. 